Hey guys, we're out in southwest Montana today doing a little bear hunting. We're out with the spotting scope looking for some bears. And we wanted to take just a couple of minutes and talk about some hand calls today. Um, you know, I get questions all year long about calling predators and what are the pros and cons between hand calls and electronic callers. So I want to talk for uh, just a few minutes about hand calls and hopefully share some you know, some things that I've learned over the years about hand calls and using hand calls for calling coyotes and calling predators. Um, you know, the great thing about hunting predators is that it's a very inexpensive sport to get started with. You literally can go to the store and buy a five or ten dollar hand call, take your deer rifle, and head out and hunt predators. And it's a, it's a great sport. Uh, it's inexpensive. It's easy to get started. And, you know, over the years, I've been uh, hunting predators for probably 20 years or more. And over the years, I've killed more predators with hand calls or mouth blown calls than I have with electronic callers. But uh, I'm a firm believer that the complete predator hunter will know how to use both and will know the situations uh, when they should use electronics or when they should use hand calls. So I want to take just a few minutes and talk about you know, some of the advantages of hand calls and uh, um, when they should be used. You know, one great thing about hand calls is they're inexpensive, and so, uh, you know, they don't break the bank to get started. There's a variety of calls on the market. They come in every size, every shape, every color, and, uh, you know, there's, there's a couple of major differences with hand calls. There's, there's a couple of things I want to point out. One is common configurations of hand calls are closed read calls and open read calls. Um, I'm a fan of open read calls for a couple of reasons. One. You can have the same call to 10 different people and everyone's gonna sound a little bit different on an open read call. The closed read call, um, everyone's gonna sound pretty similar on that call. And so the, the open read call, you definitely can come up with kind of a unique sound, a sound that's all your own. The other thing to keep in mind, especially here in Montana where we have cold weather in the winter time, is closed read calls are pretty famous for freezing up on you. So. Closed read calls are easier to learn how to blow. There's nothing wrong with them. They work. I've, I've used them for years and years. But if you're going to use closed read calls, be sure you carry you know, two or three of them with you because typically you'll have one or two sitting on the dashboard of the truck thawing out on the heater and uh, you know one or two in your pocket for taking out to a stand. So uh, just something to keep in mind, some, uh, some differences between open read calls and closed read calls. Um, you know, there's a lot of great calls on the market. There's a lot of good call manufacturers. Um, for me, the key to a hand call or a mouth blown call is find those calls that are easy for you to use and produce the sound that you want to produce. Um, and again, you know, you don't have to have a lot of different calls. You know, you can pick up a, a call like this, it's a critter call, and do just about everything you need to do on one single call. Um, I'll show you maybe what a couple of those sounds might sound like. So, you know, some common calls that you might use would be coyote vocalizations. Howls, high pitch, low pitch, you know, maybe some coyote pup distress. And then, of course, different distress sounds. So, maybe a jackrabbit distress, you can come up a little higher on the reed for a, a cottontail distress. You know, you can slow it down for a fawn distress. But really, a lot of the calls that are on the market, open read calls, one call will do it all. Um, so find one that fits your mouth, find one that's easy for you to blow and that, that you can generate the sounds that, that you want with that call. Um, some other advantages of, of hand calls or mouth blown calls is they're very easy to carry. You can drop them in a pocket. You know, and there are times when you sneak into a stand where you don't want to expose yourself, you know, to go out and set up an electronic caller. You want to sneak into a stand, sit down, and start your calling sequence. And so, you know, mouth blown calls or hand calls are great for that uh, that type of a situation. Um, another thing that I love about uh, hand calls is, you know, we're out today bear hunting, and I can throw these in my pack. They don't take up any space or any room at all. You know, if you've watched any of our videos, you've seen that we do call some coyotes and kill some coyotes during our big game hunts. So, uh, you know, those are some of the uh, some of the advantages or the benefits to mouth blown calls. Of course. They take more time to learn and to practice. Um, you know, if you're going to go out in the field and have success with mouth blown calls, you do need to spend some time and get familiar with those uh, with those calls and with those sounds. So, um, but at the end of the day, they work great. You'll kill just as many predators with mouth blown calls as you will with electronic calls. So, uh, 
get out there, find the one that works best for you, and uh, spend some time practicing with it, and uh, I'm confident that you'll have success.